All right, so thanks everybody. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, okay, good, good. So thanks everybody for coming out and you know, thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Bill Maurer uh, and I am the director of online programs for an organization called Best Buddies International as, as Bart just mentioned. Um, and uh, I've had the pleasure of, of working with um, uh, Polidia here in, in Warsaw uh, over about the last uh, year and a half, almost two years, um, building out a, a mobile app uh, for our organization. Um, and, you know, I should preface this by saying that I'm, I'm not a really a, a technical person. You know, I'm not a, not a developer, not a designer, not a coder. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've messed around with code, you know, and, and you know, broken things um, quite often. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really, I'm, I'm here more as someone who has, uh, is coming from the client side, right? I am, I am someone who would be coming to a designer, to a developer and saying, I would like you to do some, some work for us. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to, I, I'm, I'm happy to be invited out to this and I wanted to, to give this talk because we, um, you know, I've, I've been with the, the organization for, you know, a decade and a half now, about 16 years. And we've, we've done some, we've, we've got some tech ambitions, right? We've done a few things here and there where we, uh, you know, we tried to, to do something with the web. We tried to do something else with the web. And, you know, they, they were okay. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe the not, not as thought through as they could have been, right? Um, and the thing that, that I really think was uh, good and successful that made this collaboration, this particular collaboration very successful was that you know we really had there was a holistic approach that was taken by Polidia towards the design process and towards developing the app, um, and I think that that's very important because you know um, coming from nonprofit one of the main concerns is is always cost we're always looking for the cheapest thing and and that that may or may not be the best thing but anyway but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself so um, you know first just to just to start off best buddies um, we are uh, a nonprofit that builds social inclusion for people with intellectual and de developmental disabilities we are based in the United States but we're actually in over 50 countries around the world um, and our, our mission statement um, is to establish a global volunteer movement that creates opportunities for one-to-one -one friendships, integrated employment, and leadership development for, pe for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So that, that makes perfect sense, right? That you guys know what we do because I, well, anyway, I, I, I feel like the mission statement is a lot of words, but the, the easiest way to sort of see what we do is maybe just a, a quick, quick video. Yes, she can go bowling on Friday. Yes, of course. Thank you, Allie. And tell Amber I love her.
Okay, so that's what we do. We're really what we're all about is building inclusion, right? So it's it's making sure that people with disabilities, people who don't have disabilities, really just come together and you know have the opportunity, this all the same opportunities, and to interact with each other. Um, and it's been. It's been really exciting for me being here and going to a lot of these sessions that, that focus on uh, user experience and um, uh, the, uh, the UX design and uh, accessibility because ultimately those things are about inclusion as well, right? We wanna make sure that as a user of you know, a mobile application or, or even with the web, that you know, the experience works for everyone, you know, that everyone can be included. Um, and just, uh, it's really, you know, inclusion doesn't really include just, you know, in, as the video kind of showed, you know, the, these tangible things. It's also people online and increasingly people using their phones, right? So um, technology has this incredible capacity to build community. Um, but in order to maximize that potential, you know, there, there needs to be design. It needs to be, you know, thoughtful. So... <coughs> So, all right, so if just, uh, we're gonna take a little step back just for a little context. Um, you know, I was, uh, I don't know, how many of you guys are, you know, is Simpsons a thing here? I don't even know. Um, but anyway, so I was just think for some reason this talk reminded me of a, an episode from The Simpsons, which to me, uh, it doesn't seem like it's that long ago, but it turns out that it was actually like almost 20 years ago that this, uh, this happened. So it's very relevant, obviously. Um, but uh, so, Essentially, there is a there is a Bart uh, Homer Simpson. Um, he uh, discovered this thing called the internet, and you know everyone was hopping on. It was the new, it was the hot new thing, right? This was this is about 1998, the uh, the before before the first uh, the dot com crash, um, and uh, you know back then people were just hopping on the hopping on the bandwagon, and everyone needed to do something on the web. Homer created a fake company, and. Uh, Eventually, it was dismantled by Bill Gates and his thugs. But, um, you know, it, it sort of was, it, it was both um, a prescient in the sense that um, there was sort of this impending collapse of the, the sort of early internet uh, culture. But what, the, what I think they missed was that in the long term, the things that were happening back then really were, you know, um, long-term changes, uh, changes for... for that we're gonna have long-term, you know, deep impacts on all of our lives, right? Um, so, you know, cause yeah, now like all of these, there are all the brands that, you know, started around then or just, just after then, these are the most pervasive brands and most pervasive companies um, that, you know, we, we essentially run our lives through. So, you know, I guess the, the issue is, do you want to be if if so back then there was the issue with the internet and you know people were hopping on the bandwagon some people had issues they you know their their companies went out of business but the people who got in and they stayed in um you know they're doing pretty well now and you know no one wants to be the person that misses the boat right so um this is just for context but so fast forward to maybe a few years ago i think we were at that point with with mobile apps as well right everyone says oh you know i need I need a mobile app. I run a company. I run an organization. I need a mobile app. Um, and uh, you know, the the new reality is that things are are moving in that direction. Everyone wants a mobile app, um, and you know, no one wants to be left behind. <coughs> but here's the question: Is is this just another fad that people are getting involved with? Is this something that uh, you know everyone needs to have an app? Or is it something where maybe uh, maybe there's there's some thoughtful consideration that needs to happen, right? Um, as mobile app designers, you guys understand that there are good use cases for apps, and then there are maybe not not so good use cases. Um, and I think that you know that's something that you guys just have a sense for. Whereas on the client side, we we maybe are a little bit uh you know we're we're not we don't quite understand that as well as you guys do. So. Um, I think that uh, you know an app is supposed to solve a problem or provide added value, um, you know, and that's sort of the same for for every business. But um, you know, I think in a lot of cases there's there's an additional element of of status of prestige. People want to have an app just because it's a thing you're supposed to do, right? So now, so getting to the, getting to nonprofit specifically. Um, so why can building a mobile app for a nonprofit be worthwhile. Um, and you know, 
I think the, the answer to that is absolutely yes. You can build a, a nonprofit, an app for a nonprofit, and will and it can and will be worthwhile. But I think sometimes it might require a little bit of, of creativity and thought to make sure that what you're doing um, is actually you know beneficial to the users and actually adds value. Um, you know, most nonprofits are focused on fundraising, right? That's that's actually at least in the United States. I'm not sure if that's different here, but fundraising is a very very big element. It's it's honestly aside from actually doing what we do, it's probably the thing we think about the most. Um, but here's the thing, you know. We don't need apps to be built, the custom apps to be built for fundraising because there are platforms upon platforms upon platforms that do uh, donations, that do event planning. I mean, honestly, it, it makes more sense in a lot of cases to leverage the existing platforms than to, than to build something custom that, you know, is just going to do the same thing and probably do it not as well as the, the sort of the, the state of the art um, uh, platforms. So, uh, this is this is one area where I think um, there are certainly use cases where you can get creative. I know there are um, some organizations um, where you can actually identify places to donate your money, right? Um, and the, the app will actually help identify those outlets. Um, but as a, an individual organization, it's really not something I think that that you know uh, is is a very a very fertile ground for for new app development. <coughs> so. You know, the really, um, you know, if there's if there's an obvious use case for a given nonprofit organization, that's great, right? Um, you know, if it, you can you could walk into the meeting, and you know, you could talk to the, the talk to the the client, and they they'll have a, a good plan. They'll know exactly what they want, and it'll make perfect sense, and that's great. Um, the the fear though is that um, in a lot of cases that may not be the case, right? The client may be. And I'm getting a little bit of ahead, or ahead of ourselves here, but you know, I would say that as a client, we were maybe not so thoughtful as far as what we wanted, um, and you know, this this was became part of the process. And I think it's it's always um, it's the the thing to realize, I guess, is that as a as an organization, there there is some pressure just because what's in the air, because you know the the trends. You know, people are like, "Hey, you should you should do an app. We've got an app. Everyone everyone needs an app, right?" So um, there's there's sort of uh, pressure just to do an app for the sake of doing an app. But my what I would argue is that is that's a really bad idea because, well, it's a bad idea because you're really just wasting money. Um, and so the the consideration here is if you're if you're a for profit company and you make a bad business decision to invest a lot of resources in a mobile app and it doesn't work you know that's 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 on you you know it, it's really it's kind of it's it's a it's bad but you know you can potentially figure out a, a way around it um, you know and that's part of the business if you, if you don't you, you go out of business but um, the the stakes with with a nonprofit is you know presumably you believe strongly in your mission right that you think that what you're doing is important so being flippant with your your spending and and throwing a lot of money at a potentially really expensive project that really doesn't add any value to to your cons your customers or to the organization, you know, is 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 a pretty bad idea. <coughs> so, as a mobile developer, uh, designer, that puts that sort of puts you all in in maybe a, a bit of a quandary, right? A moral quandary. Um, you know, it's good it's good to have more business, right? You want to have more business. Um, but you don't want to be an enabler of misappropriate the misappropriation of funds, right? You don't want to basically tell it, like uh, enable the company, to the, the a nonprofit, to go bust or whatever because they're they're wasting their money. So, um, I think that there is a little bit as a, as a developer, there's a little bit of a, a, a sort of an ethical, you know, uh, a little bit of a calculation that you need to make whether um, you know you think it's 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 a good idea to to continue with uh, with the project because um, ultimately. I think you guys are going to have a much better sense of whether or not the project is worthwhile than um, we as clients, because we may be our judgment may be clouded by this sort of this rush to build an app, this sort of the the the, the sort of the, the swell of the tide that's pushing us in that direction. <coughs> All right. Okay. So so getting back to um, getting back to Best Buddy. So we're 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 gonna. We're gonna do a little a little history lesson. I feel like I've just been 
going back back in time, uh, you know, over and over. But in any case, best buddies, you know, we 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 make friendships. That's what we do. We do build inclusion. Um, but we're not really a, we're not a tech company. We, we're not really all that tech savvy. So, um, you know, uh, back uh, back when I first started. Um, you know, around uh, 2000, we didn't even have um, email addresses, right? As an organization, we would actually, when we when we came on staff, we would we would go to like Hotmail or Yahoo, create a free account, and we would just email people and say, "I'm Bill from Best Buddies," and you know, we'd have to hope that people realized that we were, you know, not lying. Um, and then, you know, a couple years later, we got we got some some alias accounts where you know we could put something on our business cards, but when we replied to people, we'd still be sending from Hotmail or Yahoo. So, you know, it was a bit of a it was a little little bit dodgy, right? But but here's the thing: we learned, and you know, now we are in the cloud, right? Like everybody, we're on we're on uh, Office 365, and you know, um, it's been it's been delightful. So there's there's a progression. We're we're kind of getting with the times, and we're we're able to learn from things that we've done in the past. Um, so another another thing that that has happened, I guess, you know, throughout the first decade of my uh, my work at Best Buddies, we um, we did we we collect a lot of data. We have a, about a hundred thousand uh, people around the United States every year who participate in our programs, and um, you know uh, we were collecting paper membership applications, uh, and people were mailing them to us. You know these giant boxes, and it was it was very very inefficient right um, and all the, all those paper all that paper now is has been thrown out and I don't think it ever got digitized so it's, it, it was it was all for naught in the end but um, you know about eight years ago um, I oversaw a project to move all of our all of our offline forms online so we now collect all that information digitally and you know we can we can actually we've actually been using that information to, to keep track of all our members and this is actually the database we've used to build um, our mobile app off of <coughs> so you know, again, we sort of, it took us a little a little while, but eventually we figured out where we were going. Um, okay, and so another another quick thing that we did, that we've done in the past, technology-wise, um, is that right around the same time as the, the, the Homer Simpson reference from earlier, um, we launched a program called eBuddies, which is an email pen pal program um, and uh, you know it was so it it was funded by actually some dot com money back in the day, um, and uh, it it, uh, it it actually works pretty well. Um, and so it's a it's a simple concept. We match a person with IDD with a person without. They email each other, um, and uh, you know for whatever reason, from a marketing perspective, we kind of got a little carried away. We were really excited about it. So we um, we branded it as being, you know, this cutting edge, you know, innovative program, you know, just, you know, using all kinds of, um, you know, tech uh, tech lingo. I think we used the, uh, we talked about bridging the digital divide and, and you know, um, c creating a community of friendship in cyberspace. We were very, very excited about being tech savvy when really all we were doing was we, you know, we uh, we had created a you know a mechanism for people to meet on the internet and email each other. But in any case, this program actually worked out very well, and it's still ongoing. We've got um, we've got members all around the world. I think we've served like fifteen thousand people, um, and uh, you know it's 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 great. But um, so our our second foray though into sort of tech stuff. Um, how many of you guys recognize who this guy is? Let's see. How many? Anybody? Really? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I, I'm really throwing out a bunch of dated references. So anyway, this guy is this is Tom from MySpace. MySpace Tom? No? Anybody? So anyway, back in the back in the mid aughts, you know, before Facebook had taken over the world, you know, MySpace was sort of the king and before that it was Friendster, right? Um, in any case, you know, everyone at that point was like, Yeah, you know, we could we could do a social network for our organization, our community, our club, what have you. It was like the thing. Um, and so we we thought we could do that too. So there were there were open source, you know, community building tools. You download them from the internet. You slap on a custom skin, invite your friends, profit, right? Um, so uh, w it turned out um, that you know we didn't really have the expertise, or you know that we weren't providing the user experience that people wanted. And um, you know there was actually an initial we got an initial influx of people. People were really excited about it. But then within six months, it was, you know, taken over by spam bots. So, you know, and then, you know, I think within like a year or two, it was totally, totally mothballed. So, um, 
th this seems like it, it, it's not, not a great story for us. And, you know, it's not something we like to talk about all that much, but it was a, it was a good learning experience for us, right? Because we realized that, you know, maybe there were limits to, you know, sort of what we could do as a nonprofit by ourselves, right? Just like downloading our own, downloading open source software and maintaining ourselves. We realized that maybe that wasn't a good model for us because we're not necessarily the most tech savvy group. <coughs> so, all right, so, so now we're getting almost to the present. Uh, fast forward to 2015 um, and uh, we really wanna build an app because you know what, that's what everyone's doing. That's the thing that, you know, as a, a cool, hip, international nonprofit, you know, we're, you know, we want, we want to make sure that we're staying on top of things. So, um, and uh, we, uh, we have some grand visions for this. We, uh, we want it to be a combination of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and, and Snapchat. You know, we wanted to do basically everything that, that those things did. Um, but we don't want it to be like, uh, our, our initial attempt. I guess it was called Buddy for Life. Our, our social network was called Buddy for Life. We don't want it to be Buddy for Life 2.0. We want this one to be good. So um, at this point, we were very lucky to be introduced to uh, Polidia. Um, and uh, over the course of the years through various projects, some that I mentioned, some that I haven't, you know, I've worked with, with many web developers um, over the years. Um, and, you know, I haven't necessarily had bad experiences, but um, the thing that uh, the thing that really impressed me with working with with Polidia is that they really did approach it from both the design and the engineering side at the same time, right? Because um, I think usually we would just we would find someone who had the technical expertise to just build the thing for us, but you know someone who didn't necessarily care all that much about the design aspect. So we would get an open source, you know. Uh, community building software, and we'd, we'd pretty much use it as, as sort of like off the shelf because, you know, no one really cared about um, how to, to sort of optimize that experience for the users. So um, that was something that was a, a big change for us, and I think that ultimately it was something that, that made the experience, um, you know, much more, much more fruitful. So um, we, we, we had some introductory meetings, and we were like, hey, so, you know, here's what we want to do. We wanted to do all the things that all the social media, the, these billion dollar companies, we wanted to basically do what they do, but we want it to be cooler and for, uh, just for us. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they, they humored us, but they didn't necessarily start doing what they did. And, and what they did was that uh, a couple of designers who are actually both in the room, you guys can point and, point and laugh right here, uh, Magda and, and Carolina. Uh, they came out to, um, we run a conference in, in uh, Indiana every, every summer. Um, about 2,500 student leaders from chapters all around the world come. Um, they basically attend sessions. They learn how to, uh, to run their chapters and it's really just kind of a big best buddies party, right? Um, and uh, and, and uh, so, so Carolina and Magda came and they conducted focus groups um, they surveyed, you know, different, different, they surveyed our staff, they surveyed, um, you know, some students, and they just sort of, they actually, rather than just taking our word for what we needed and what we wanted, they actually, you know, they did a little bit of research, right? Um, which was, which was awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, the, that's the thing that I think is really the most valuable aspect of our, um, our partnership is that there, there was this level of thoughtfulness. Um, and, you know, frankly, they had a design expertise and, and uh, engineering expertise that, that we didn't have. And without that, um, you know, we would have ma probably made some, some pretty, pretty silly decisions. So, so Magda and Carolina come back um, and they, they draw up a design and they, they come up with, with some recommendations. Um, and, you know, the, the recommendations were basically, you know, really, you, you want to narrow the focus. You need to identify your core audience, think about how you're going to engage with those people. You know, are they going to want to use this? You know, who are these people? What are they, what are they using? Do they want to use this? Um, and then, you know, is, what's going to actually add value for these people, right? You're actually looking at the people that, that are being affected and, and, and having this discussion. Because, you know, honestly, we weren't, we weren't thinking that. We just wanted an app. Um, so, so, and they were right. And so this was, this was a hugely ambitious project that we had and it, it, it got scaled down to a slightly less ambitious, but still ambitious project, but a more, more reasonable project, a more focused project. Um, and, um, you know, we didn't take all of the recommendations. I think there are probably some things we did that, that they would, 
they would say were, were maybe not the best decisions, but here's the thing. We now have uh, a, mobile, a mobile app that works on iOS and Android. Um, I really like it. it. It it looks great. You know, our members can share photos in in an Instagram feed that can be shared to Facebook and other Facebook pl uh, other social media platforms. It gives them ac access to chapter events, chapter calendars. They get notifications when you know something's happening in their area, and you know, paperwork that used to be pulling teeth is now super simple for them to do from their phone when they have a spare five minutes. So, you know, it really does you know add value, and it was it it was scaled down from what we had. Um, previously. So, so, all right, so here are um, some key considerations, I would say. As, as a developer, if, if you're approached by a nonprofit client who's interested in, in potentially engaging in building a mobile app, um, you know, the things to think about are, you know, is this actually going to, to add any value for, for the, the client's customers, right? Are they, are they actually, is it going to be useful? Um, you know, who, who, who is the audience? Is anyone going to use this? Um, you know, Best Buddies, we're fortunate because we have a sort of a, a captive audience of about 100,000 people, 100, people who sign up for our programs every year, right? Um, but that's not necessarily going to be the case for everybody. Um, you know, so, and, and in a lot of cases, um, you can just leverage those existing platforms. You leverage your responsive website. Um, you know, and it's not, the answer isn't always going to be building out a mobile app. Um, you know, yeah, and then for the scope, you really want to try to narrow the focus down to what is the, the, the most, most important thing. And again, I think this is all stuff that you guys know, but I think that you need to be prepared when you're talking to someone on the client side that, you know, this is, this is a thing that, that is going to happen. People are going to want to do everything, and you're going to need to, um, you're need to help them cull it down to something that's maybe more focused and more reasonable. Um, and then cost. I think that... Um, you know, cost is always a big thing. And I think this is where a lot of nonprofits get themselves into trouble is that, you know, we always go for the low bid. Like we're always, we're always, we're always excited to save money and, and get what we want for cheap. Or, or, you know, a lot of times we, we want to get it donated, which, you know, you know, there, there, there's charity, but, you know, that may, may or may not be feasible for, for people who need to actually, you know, put food on the table. So, um, I think you need to be upfront and you know make sure that when people enter into these conversations that that they the client are aware of what the the long term costs are going to be what are what is the maintenance what is this going to be year over year because that's the kind of thing that you know we don't really we we as non tech people don't even th like we don't even think about the fact that you have to pay you know for hosting on an ongoing basis for however long you've got your app going right, so that's the kind of thing that you know needs to be. Ex you you have to speak very clearly, short, concise sentences because we may not get it the first couple times. Um, and then really the the main thing is to 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 not be shy about being an advocate for for good design, for good project work, and and being opinionated and saying, look, I think that I think that what you're proposing is a bad idea or it's a great idea. You know, it might be a great idea, but I think that it's very important for for you as a designer. To, to speak freely and to be honest with your, your clients because you don't want to get to a point where you know, you're, you're, you're selling someone a, a, a product that you know, uh, you know, is not what they want and you know, is going to underdeliver for them based on their expectations, which may be unrealistic. Um, it's better to be honest and upfront, make sure that people are clear on what the, the expectations are and what the, what the costs are going to be um, because otherwise, you know, you may you may not feel fulfilled um, at the end of the day, and your clients certainly not going to feel fulfilled because they're going to feel like you know they didn't get what they wanted. So uh, it's very important that you're you're clear up front. <coughs> so all right, so up to this point, I think I've done a pretty good job of of making a case against ever working with a nonprofit, right? And so you're probably think wondering why why would I do this? Um, because it sounds like it's a it's a huge pain in the ass to work with nonprofits, but here's here's the thing, um, nonprofit working with a nonprofit can make a big difference. Um, you know, we are, you know, by using by adding this app, we are creating all kinds of new, fun, lasting memories of, um, you know, these these great one to one interactions that are happening for years. They're going to happen for people's lifetimes. They're gonna they're gonna be able to take this. You know, take the take their experiences that they're capturing 
in the app that we built, you know, for the rest of their lives. Um, <coughs> and, uh, you know, I can't speak for, for uh, Polidia, but, you know, I hope they understand the impact that they made on our members. Um, and they continue to make on our members. So uh, I'm going to leave you with a, uh, a quick story. Um, this, is, this is actually about our eBuddies program. And you can see there are these uh, two guys in the middle holding the t-shirt. That's, um, that's Bill and Robert. Um, and they were introduced to each other about 17 years ago through our eBuddies program. They're one of, one of our like, probably first, first matches, first batch of matches. Um, and they've been emailing ever since uh, 2000. Um, and uh, you know, at this point, they're, they're basically family. And this picture was taken a few years ago when um, uh, I guess uh, Bill uh, on the left came up to um, New Hampshire where, uh, where Robert lives and they, they, you know, he brought his whole family and they, uh, they, they went to, a, they got some pizza and you know, they, did, they, had a, they had a great time. But here's the thing, they're basically, they're basically family now uh, through, through this, you know, this, this, you know, thing that we did, right? Um, and here's what, here's what, um, what Bill said uh, about his experience with, um, with uh, eBuddies. So he says, eBuddies is a wonderful program that supports and promotes so social inter interaction for people of all levels of intellectual and developmental disabilities. It's a community that values inclusion and celebrates diversity. It's a great way to give some, uh, something of yourself that costs nothing but, you, uh, but a few moments of your time each week, yet will pay you back with priceless memories, great friendship, and the knowledge that you are helping someone feel a sense of equality and normalcy in their lives. And so, so yes, working with a nonprofit on building a mobile app, there might be a little bit of extra, extra work that needs to go on, right? A little bit of extra, extra effort that needs to happen, but the, the payoff in the end is gonna be so much, so much more. It's gonna be so much more real. There's, gonna, there's so much potential for impact um, that it's, I, I would still encourage all of you to do so. So anyway, I guess that's, that's about it. So, all right. All right Thank thanks. you, Bill. So do we have any questions here on the, yeah. So do you start it as a paper program, yes? Just mails and fixing chapters. Uh, wait, say, say again? Uh, you started as a paper program, yes? Basically, no, no technology. So uh, how, how did you do your website and your infrastructure? Well, <laughs> how, how, like, did, did you learn any, any lessons from that? Um, so are, are you talking about this project in particular or from the beginning? Yeah, so I mean, so I, I feel like for us, it's it, we we've learned we've learned over time just by muddling through, right? So um, I think that when I I came aboard when we first launched our eBuddies program and our first website, um, well, I think our first website was built by someone who was an in-house you know part-time web developer, and it was it was very very not not so not so pretty. We, um, we got a, a, a graphic design, a student actually, to design a template for us, our, our version two website, which was very cool, but there was also um, uh, <laughs> very loud, like uh, neon green colors and, and, and such, and it was, looking back, it was, we thought it was really cool, but um, looking back, maybe it wasn't so, so good looking. But um, in any case, like, I ended up, you know, as someone who had no technical training or whatever, I ended up being the, the, the developer, the person who had to maintain the websites. And, you know, I think that, yeah, the thing that I learned over time is like, you know, sure, I can maintain a website, but, you know, it's really not a good idea because I'm doing a pretty lousy job of it. So um, the thing that I, I would say as a, as a nonprofit is that, um, you know, my expertise or the, my organization's expertise is inclusion, is making friends. Um, my expertise isn't, you know, building out websites. And I think that as much as we can, as much as reasonable, I think it is good to, to find people with expertise, often not even in-house people, like actually finding contractors, developers, designers. Um, I think as much as possible, leveraging those resources uh, is a good way to go. Anyone else? <laughs> Carolina, how about you gonna tell us some anecdotes from your cooperation? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Magda, I'm really curious. 
You know, I don't work at this poll idea, but I'm curious about that, and probably the uh, audience is also pretty curious about that. Okay, no pressure. Oh, we have a story. Great. I don't have a story. I just wanted to say that when we... Sorry, maybe... Yeah, Magda will add something. Uh, so I just wanted to say that when we uh, came there to Indiana for this uh, conference, we just uh, learned and noticed that the whole Best Buddies is very into, the, into its mission and we uh, and are really stick to it. And yeah, can you confirm? <laughs> <laughs> for sure, <laughs> and uh, and we've learned that this application is uh, for sure will be very important and very useful. I don't know, maybe you can mention about this friendship update, and we really f felt that this feature will be the most important for for the for the for the buddies actually. Yeah, yeah, no, and so uh, Carolina talked about the friendship update, and I, I mentioned I think sort of in passing the. The, re the reporting that was like pulling teeth before. So uh, every month our, our, our buddy pairs, we call them buddy pairs when you match up a person with and without disabilities, um, we ask them to tell us what they did that month, right? Um, and it used to be essentially a report. You'd have to log on to the computer, you know, write out a report and, and no, one, no one did it. Um, but now essentially what we've done is we've built out a system where um, over the course of the month as you're taking selfies at the, the movie theater, you can actually fill out your your report on the fly by just taking pictures of yourself doing fun things and at the end of the month you've pretty much already done all the work so it's it's not it's not a big report so it's yeah that's that's a, an example of value added that was very 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 specific to best buddies that doesn't make sense to to anyone else necessarily but for our members that was a huge add um, and I think that that was the kind of thing that you know in our discussions um, you know the these guys were able to suss out as uh, uh, an area that we needed to focus on. So. How many buddies do you have? Uh, so I think this year we're at about 100,000 active, active members around the world. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Is, Are you guys also supporting the whole soft software, the whole system? Okay. Yeah. Uh, is that like also a maintenance with that? Yeah, that's that's a that that is a that is a, a thing that's happening, and and it's actually a topic of discussion. I think at some point, you know, the, there there could be something where we would we would actually take control of the app. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, right now we're still we're still finishing up uh, some right. some right. final final feature. Cool. You have yeah. more questions? Yeah. Did you consider open sourcing the application? Because you said that you've got uh, 100 uh, buddies. So I think those buddies know other buddies who can be bored, develop 100,000. So it's quite a lot of people. So they could have buddies who are bored developers who can do something after hours and help to maintain app or improve or add features or stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I hadn't actually, you know, really ever considered, um, you know, opening it up. But, you know, I mean, it's it's something it's something we could certainly consider. Um, you know, I think that the 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 specifics of the app are, are very they're it's very custom to to our organization, right? But that's not to say that there's not potential even within our organization because we have um, we have our, our international affiliates, right? And really, this right now is focused on. United States members, um, but you know, it's it's something. Yeah, if we were to open source it, you know, we could get people people in Poland working on uh, you know the the Polish version. And that would be awesome. So. so, what about the other all the other online programs? What else do you have? What's like? So the the main the main online programs that we have, you know, obviously the app is 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 it's sort of online, um, but it's not really a program in itself. The the main. The main program that exists exclusively online is our eBuddies program, um, you know. And as far as other other online programs, a lot of it has to do with um, you know the data collection and and you know managing. Um, a, aside from the app, we have a, another uh, web portal interface for for all of our chapters that, that they can they can access just via the web. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. 
Are you going to stay with us for the rest of the day? Yeah, yeah, Great. I'll be here. So. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Bart. Thanks, guys.